And sometimes, amen, this week, I begin to pray, God, don't allow this to be a religious experience for people that they think the only time they sitting in the fire is when they show up in the room. And, and Pastor Laura say, Mom, I was wondering when we take the decoration down, can we leave the fire up? I said, for sure. I said, because the Lord said that we got to learn how to sit in the fire. Not just physically, but spiritually. So what you saying, woman of God? I said, I didn't come to the church since last Sunday. But I've been in the fire all week. I've been feeling the heat of the flames of the fire being turned up, Gloria and Nebuchadnezzar, because things have been released to re, re, amen, to try to reattach itself, come on, to reclaim you, to re, amen, to reconnect you with what God has purified and disconnected you from. Somebody say, I got to stay in this fire right here. And it was days that things started happening and being said and done, I say, turn up the heat, God. Hey, glory to God. Then my daughter, Evangelist Trudy, said, she said, the Lord told me I gave birth. I had multiple births. And she said, I don't understand it. And she said, he said, you had twins. <laughs> He gave a double. He, she said, he said he gave me double for my trouble. <laughs> Glory to God. He gave a favor. <laughs> and what was the other one? And bless, she said, it was favor and blessings. He said, because he going to bless her for her shame. He going to give a double for her shame. And I said, okay, Isaiah 61 and 7. He said, for your shame. Come on. All the embarrassment, all the hurt, all the, come on. Some of y'all don't even know the, 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 the pain of what you went through. It's for purpose. You so focus on the pain. And I told you last week, I wrestled with what preaching, what to preach about, because here come that same spirit wanting me to say what somebody else did. But, but when you have, have gone through the necessary process, amen, your pain has purpose. And can't nobody bring forth or push out what your pain, amen, has put in you to push out but you. So the devil tried to tell me, you didn't have some great speakers from Thursday all the way up to Saturday. You don't need to say nothing. You ain't got nothing really to say because the devil is a liar. And so, 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 so now the Lord, I, I, all week I've just been, been, been just studying. And, and so I talked a little bit about where the legacy had begun and what God is trying to do. He's trying to restore the apostolic order that he gave from the beginning of time, even up until now. And so he reminded me that even in the New Testament church, that we have to be, amen, put in remembrance as the scripture read from our daughter the first night of words of exhortation that as it was said in Matthew the 11th chapter and the 12th verse, said, as it was in the days of John the Baptist, even until now, we got to get a now concept. That God still has a plan for his church. The remaining part. Somebody say, but we must function in order. There is an order to function in the legitimacy of the apostolic and prophetic church of the living God. Watch this. So I begin to continue my study and I begin to look at, amen, as we read the scripture on last week, the conference theme, and begin to talk about how the importance of God talking about the need for, for 
a travail to come back out of the loins of his people. So he said, I won't request it, but I'm going to initiate it. The Lord said he's not going to request it in this season. He's going to initiate it. And this is what messed me up because even as he used his prophet Isaiah to speak the words that was coming from his lips. He said, I'm not going to ask you to do something that I'm not willing to do myself. He began to speak. He said, I, I've holding my peace long enough. In other words, I've been quiet too long concerning my church. Concerning, how many of y'all feel like you've been quiet for too long about the wrong thing? You, you spoke up too quick about the wrong thing, but you've been quiet too long about the right thing. You're quick to speak about the wrong thing, but the right thing, amen, you ain't got nothing to say. In other words, he not only said that, he said, not only am I going to initiate that something needs to be released, a sound needs to be heard, glory to God, but I'm initiated. He said, I'm going to take up a travail. I'm going to take up a travail like a woman that is about to bring forth. And so I began to go back and reflect over the history of what the Lord was, amen, why the church, amen, is so in need for the sound of travail to come back to it. Because when the apostolic and prophetic church was being birthed in the book of Acts, come on here somebody, amen, the Bible said, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. I need to get that scripture from it. I need you to read it with some, 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 mm, cause, cause some of y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm coming for this, this spirit of, 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 of you religious stupors. That, that because what God showed me is some people that's been waiting for this sound to be released from the Lord's church again. And they've just been waiting for that sound to say, I don't want to deal with these church goers no more. That, amen, I know that go to church and do all those religious rhetics and routines and stuff. But then they come out here and they live like the devil. If I could just hear what I need to hear this time, if I could just get to where I need to be. God, I know how to pursue you for myself. I just need to be in the midst of two or three. Anybody, tell the truth, anybody, now feel like I know that there's more of God that I'm yet to encounter. And I'm so desperate and I'm so intentional and I'm so determined to have that encounter that I'm not going to put the responsibility on another person. I'm going to pursue God for myself. That means it might cost me a little more praying. It might cost me a little more fasting. It might cost me a little more loneliness. Come on. It might cost me a little more rejection. Come on. It might cost me a little more persecution. But if I could get it back in my pursuit of him, when I could get desperate enough that I'll go after God if nobody else want to go after him. If I could just seek his face and not his hand, I don't need another blessing. I don't need another house. I don't need another car and be empty. So I begin to just look at the history of how it started with Jacob. Because as my husband was saying and I was 
amen, begin to say, get out of my message, get out of my message. I was like, okay, God, are you going to let him, amen, just go there and, 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 and I not have anything else to say? I'm telling you, I've been writing on everything because the Holy Ghost has been speaking. And I just thank God that I'm in a place that, amen, he can speak to me and I can get it. So he began to show me, he said, he said, it started with Jacob. He said, when Jacob, amen, amen, realized that there was more for him, even though I started out in the, in the wrong posture, I started out in the spirit of a trickster of somebody that loved to get over on everybody to get what I want. Amen. You see this cycle. It began from the beginning. Even when parents gave birth to their children, they preferred one over the other. Oh, my God. Y'all don't want to talk to me. And so I begin to look at it. But, but when he started birthing his children and that favorite son, amen, that he chosen and gave the coat of many colors, showed up on the scene. And even though Joseph, amen, done a lot of great things in his process of persecution, amen, once he was made king, amen, and ruler in his place, but after his process, watch this. Somebody say that same spirit crept up in his life in the time <laughs> of giving birth. So in other words, what are you saying? The devil don't care about us as a representation of the church getting pregnant. He don't care about us, get, amen, giving birth anymore. When he can contaminate our environment that can kill what we birth out prematurely. He wasn't bothered about us coming for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. He was bothered. He's bothered now because some of us have committed to cause ourselves to what we gave birth to live in this season. And it being by any means necessary, I'm going to produce an, a healthy environment. That means I'm not going to allow any contaminants, come on, any radioactive things that can poison. Come on here, somebody, that can poison my spirit, that can, amen, oppress me, that can put a damper on me. I don't want to hear no gossip. I don't want to hear no idol. Come on here, somebody. No negativity. Amen. I've been telling for all week. I'm not so quick to think negative of anything. I'm a, if God allowed it, amen, I'm going to ask him what you want to do, what you want to get out of it. Because something wrong with you when you can come out of a powerful move of God and think that the devil don't immediately come, amen, to steal that word that was sown in your spirit. Glory to God. Think he going to wait till you walk away and get, get strong and company? No, no, no. He comes immediately for that very word. And some of y'all miss the word you need. So here, he began to show me, he said, okay, he, he said he was going to break the cycles. And when you, when you understand that, that, that this is something that he did because of his toil, he said, he said, now that I'm in a position to birth out, amen, from my own loins, glory to God, amen, through my own wife, amen, that the Lord blessed me with. He said, I'm going to name my children. Come on, I heard my husband say, your name means something. And, and, and Joseph began to name his children and he named his first son amen Ephraim meaning forgetting all my toil all this, uh, the suffering of my father's house come on some of y'all need to go back and ask God to help you if you didn't do it in the natural you need to do it in the spirit to give you amen another opportunity to birth out your spiritual children so it can help you forget the toil and the pain of at your father's house at your mother's house or whoever raised you cause no longer will you be able to move forward in kingdom of business or assignments holding on to the pain of your past he said he named one Ephraim and he named the other Manasseh Ephraim meaning forgetting the pain and the toil and the anguish of my father house and Manasseh means amen he yet made me fruitful so 
So you mean your travail don't mean nothing? Sitting up here acting like you the only one went through. You the only one was hurt. You was the only one rejected. You was the only one molested. You was the only one raped. Come on here, somebody. You was the only one abused. But when you get the sound of the travail, that reminds Eoshiah of the father promise. You begin to travail and say, my pain has purpose. And now I need to produce. Pastor Paul said, I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. And I'm the only one, if I went through it, I'm the only one can produce the purpose of why I had to pain the way I pain. So I looked at this. I looked at it. What is travailing? Travailing is that manifestation of the grief. Not only that of your pain that you felt, but the pain that the heart of God felt for you. And I said, God, what you trying to, he said, tell them, don't act like I did it to hurt them. I did it so that they can connect with me. To let them know that if they, amen, amen, that to, to suffer with him is to reign with him. In other words, we cannot partake. We cannot be in real relationship until we be touched by pain still. But we don't have to bear the bulk of it. Because the Bible said he was wounded for our transgression and bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripe, the stripes he took really took the bulk of it. You just being touched by it. Somebody said you just getting a little touch. And if you quitting off that, you really ain't called to reign with him. Paul said, oh, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowshipping of his suffering. So to know God don't mean I just know him when he give me everything I want. He said, I know him in the good and the bad and the ugly. I know him from both sides. He said, I know how to be abound and I know how to be abased and whatsoever state I'm in, therewith I've learned to be content. Because I know that this too shall pass. I know that there will be glory after this. The Bible says, after ye have suffered a while, all y'all weak church goers. You quitting on God because folk ain't spoke to you. You quitting on God because you got open rebuke. When the Bible say open rebuke, rebuke is better than secret love. You, you quitting on God because you got chastened. When the Bible say he chastened those whom he loved. He who is without chastisement is a bastard. If I can't chasten you, I can't parent you. If I'm only your leader and I'm the bomb.com, me and my husband, only when we say what your flesh wants, is, you ain't called to me if I can't correct you. All this wishy-washy, my name change, I'm, hey, you know, ain't nothing else, and you got you for me, and when, I'm, when you think you where you, oh, no, the devil is a liar. I need you to take up a travailing and sit in the fire and say, God, purify me. Get that attitude. Get that negative thought. Because when I'm tied to my man and woman of God, what's on them going to flow through me? So watch this. I ain't got no title. I ain't trying to give them that. I just need to give you the word. John 16, 20, 22 says, Verily I say unto you that ye shall reap and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And ye shall be sorrowful, 
but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she's in travail, has sorrow because her hour is come. But as soon as she deliver of the child, she remembers no more the anguish for the joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you, because the joy I give, or the peace I give, it surpasses, somebody say, it surpasses all understanding. So what I don't understand, I know that this is coming from God. Watch this, because this is the promise that Jesus was speaking to his disciples, that when you are in the process of being fruitful, the main thing that, amen, causes you to be fruitful have to be physically and visibly absent, but your faith has to be in contact or intact with it still that even though I don't see it, I know it's already done. Somebody need to lay your hands on your womb and say, I'm still fruitful. Even though I'm in a holding season, look like everybody else is getting blessed. Look like everybody else is getting out of debt. Look like everybody else's marriage is good. Look like everybody else's children is good. I'm in a holding pattern, but I'm still fruitful. Because the indicator is if I deliver before time, Sometimes, Nick, you ain't always able to handle, amen, the, 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 the developing process. Because the child is too premature. They have to reach a certain, a certain uh, gestation period, a, a certain a age, or, 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 or come on here, somebody, a development for them to be able to pick up and continue the development process. So for all of y'all that's trying to break rank and become something you ain't been processed to be, want folk to call you something that you don't even live a life that match, that got the character or, or, or the integrity match it. Come on here, somebody. I'm so overdone and, and, and done and tired, stick of folk in it, tired of folk, want these titles, and your life is jacked up. You can't even trust the God you want to speak on his behalf to keep your flesh under subjection. Yes, the Lord will use whoever he will, but he can use a, a cleaner vessel, a purified vessel, more better than he can use a contaminated one. Woo! I mean, that I don't just pray no more. Lord, bless me indeed. I'm crying out. God bless your house. Bless your people. Shave your church. Some of us were so critical on last week, right after we got out of this revival. Glory to God. When we saw these people, that said, God, if you, if the world is bold enough to ask for a, a certain area of the town and they be granted with, amen, with, with, with permits, glory to God, and with the support and the backing of the sheriff's department, how much more if the church open up its mouth and ask for the block party? Y'all don't want to talk. I am, I'm not scared. If God said if we've been confessing, now it's time to manifest and demonstrate. We take the south side of Columbus, Georgia for the glory of God. But it's the travail. Watch this. It's the travail because when you understand that, that my travail makes me fruitful, everything that the devil meant for evil, I now understand God is turning it around for my good. That's what Joseph said. You meant it for evil. But God meant it for my good. Come on here, somebody. You got to stop allowing, amen, the lies and the harassment of the enemy, of your pain, of your past, speak to your destiny. You got to stop allowing it because when you realize, glory to God, now you have a legal assistant, the Holy Ghost. He helps you. 
And so the Lord began to show me, he said, godly sorrow, work is repentance. And even in my travail, I've been repenting for some things. Sorry, God, for not trusting you with all my pain. Whether it's the pain of my childhood, come on here, somebody. Whether it's the pain of my marriage, the pain of my children, the pain of my health, Lord, I'm sorry. For your word declared that for godly sorrow, work is repentance to salvation. What is salvation? Being rescued from harm and danger. God said, you don't see what I see? You ain't hearing what I'm hearing? Y'all communicate more from the world language than you are from the language of my people that I've chosen to fulfill my promise through. You all don't even know how the importance of when reverence is restored, how to respond. We done got so comfortable. When we even come into the house of God, it's things that we never desired or thought we would ever do in our salvation that we're doing now. And we still say it's church. Or God is pleased. But I begin to look at this, and I, I said, God, I love how you put it in the, in the easy read because he was like, not only am I going to take up a travail, he said, for a long time I have said nothing. I have controlled myself and kept quiet. But now, it's some things, Pastor Fatima, that I done made up my mind. I don't care who stay or who go. It's some things that will not go undealt with when it comes to New Life House of Prayer. He said, this shall be a house of prayer and not a den of thieves. If I can't address it, don't bring it up in here. He said, but now I will cry out like a woman giving birth. And this time, I said, God, I got my breathing together now. I got my breathing under control because I ain't going to take it personal. It's ministry. See, some things we're going to deal with now that we've travailed and given birth, people going to think you may, hey, man, boo, I'm authorized to deal with this. I'm authorized to address this. Come on, here, somebody. I'm not going to act like I don't see it. I'm not going to act like I don't smell it. I'm not going to act like I didn't hear it. discomfort just because you don't say nothing that don't mean that 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 it's gonna go away that ain't none of my business if God allowed you to see it he wants you to address it and addressing it it don't mean always going to people it's in the spirit of prayer of travail God I done had enough of this that's why I'm coming for this religious spirit I ain't impressed because you come in here show up Sunday after Sunday and your life ain't changing I ain't impressed because you say that was a good word, Apostle V, or, or, or Mama V, or, or, or Apostle Hines, or Dad, or whatever, y'all. You, 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 I'm not impressed by that. I'm impressed when I hear testimonies that your life is being impacted and transformed by the renewing of your mind. That means you're not going out the same way you came, and God is being more in control of your life than you are. So what I, so what I was... He said, he said, my breathing is getting faster and louder. It's like, I literally saw God say, it's like he gave us as the church an opportunity, watch this, to say some stuff. You ain't going to deal with that, Lord. I, sh I, I was hoping you'd deal with it. I, I, I was hoping you'd deal with it, Mary. I, I was hoping you'd deal with it, Hope. Come on here, somebody. He, he, he said, I'm he, uh, you, you, you. I know you saw what I saw. Watch this. Y'all don't believe me because he said, I will destroy.
destroy the hills and the mountains. I will dry up all the plants that grow there. I will change the rivers to dry land. I will dry up pools of water. And then will I lead the blind along a path they, will, they never knew to places where they have never been before. I will change darkness into light for them. I will make the rough ground smooth and will do these things for them. I will not abandon my people. But some of them have left me. You show up in the place where I'm at, but you left me. You're not connected, disappointed, and shamed. He said, deaf people, listen to me. Blind people, look and see. In all the world, no one is more blind than my servant. My church, the people which are called by my name, they don't want to humble themselves no more. They don't want to pray no more. They want to pray, pray these selfish prayers. Bless me indeed. Give me what I want, God, but don't look at how I'm living after I get what I want. He said, no one is more deaf than my messengers. You got preachers now won't even preach or uncompromise in truth. They won't preach hellfire and brimstone from the truth of God's word like I am today. Because they're scared the offering going to change. They're scared the numbers going to go down. Uh-huh. He said, no one is more blind than my chosen people. The servant of the Lord. My people see what they should do. But they do not obey me. They can hear with their ears. But they refuse to listen to me. So all of y'all, I hear God, I hear God, but are you listening? The Lord wants them to do what is right. He wants them to honor his wonderful teaching. Don't just be able to quote my scripture. Honor my word. For I have spoken to you even in James. Say, he that are hearers of the word only and not doers of the word. You deceive yourselves. He said, but look at this. Look at his people. Others have defeated them and have stolen from them. A lot of y'all, you, what you're trying to think you're going to keep from the church I think that the church trying to take from you, other folks stealing from you. They're robbing you. Look how much time you have to work to get what you're getting. They're still in God's time. They're still in his prayer time. Come on. They're still in his quiet time, that devotion time. Come on. That relational time. You can't tell me you're going to stay married to somebody and y'all don't spend time together sometime. It ain't going to last. But look at them. Others have defeated them and have stolen from them. You rather let the world take from you. But then time you need something, you want to come to the church and you want us to take up a travail for you. He said, that's why I told you to tell them. They got to learn how to sit in the fire. The refiner's fire. The fire that makes you know that I got better for you. What you settling, what the enemy is sending to you, that's not from me. I just need you to know how to go through the process and wait for the promise. Stop speaking the problem and pray for the promise. Push out the promise. The promise don't come without pain. Lord, I don't mind waiting. Not just on you, but in you. Teach me how to wait in the fire. Teach me how to sit and watch everybody else look like they're ahead of me. But know that you got an appointed time to bless me. You got an appointed time to bring me out front. You got an appointed time to put me on display. Don't let me break rank. Don't let me get ahead of you. Even when I want to run ahead of you. God, let me travail. I know what I'm good at. 
I know the places you have already allowed me to go. No matter how many prophecies God gave people and talking about the platforms and the nations and the things that my husband and I would do. But God, all of that sound good, but if I ain't ready, don't you turn me loose. Don't you release me prematurely. Because when your set time, when your scheduled time, when God pencil you in, it's scheduled time. And it's due time. That's why he tells us in, in Galatians, amen, 6 and 9, and let us not be weary in well-doing. Let us not be weary in travailing. Come on. Don't get tired of travailing. Because in due time, when it's time to bring forth, you shall deliver. And what you deliver is going to live. It's going to be healthy. It's going to be fruitful. It's going to cause you to forget all the pain, all the hell, all the rejection, all the abandonment, all the hurt. Shatarabasaya. So the young men are afraid. They're locked in prison. I bind the spirit. That got our men scared to be men now. The devil done lied to them, making them think it more better to try to be a woman than it is a man. Because a man can't make it in this world. The devil is a liar. You got to feel the pain of what it costs to be a real man. All week long, I travailed against this spirit of a man that think it's safe, glory to God, to stay at home and do nothing. Even if you're a stay-at-home father, you ought to be a man in position to learn how to get your hustle on and bring something to the table. You should never feel comfortable. I look at this man of God every day in his pain. Deal with pain. Cry out to his God. Limited in what he can do. Nobody sees that. But tell God he trusts him. Because I know my responsibility as a man is to be the provider of my house. Heard a man say, a, a real man of God, hey amen, you ought to be glad you got a woman that will hold you up and back you up in those tough times. But she shouldn't have to be the one to rescue you all the time. She shouldn't mind meeting you half of the way. Because my husband was a soul, always been a soul. I tell him, I'll pull it up in a minute. I'll be your sugar mama in this season. I got you. I'm, help, I'm his help meet. Help make to help him meet. You ain't listening to God when you complain it. You ought to be glad that you're a woman that know how to add to your man to God. I got a problem. You don't know the, the, the power of your womb. Everything that he's not, you have the power to birth it out of your womb. But you don't want to go through the pro process. See, God, for every one of us that was trying to commit spiritual abortion, this is how far he took it. He said, you got to be even willing to go to the place that if you ask for or you join yourself to some prior to B.C., before Christ. If God allow it to still remain now that you are in Christ, you're going to have to travail through the process. And if God don't cut you loose from it, you better stay in that travail. I don't care. Say what you want to say. Because when you really join the God, guess what? You got to wait in the fire. And the fire don't always go down, die down for you. Because the sooner the heat get turned up, whatever is contaminated, whatever is ungodly, the sooner it can get burnt off you. And then he sends the full of soap to wash it away. And you forget about all the hell you had to go through, all those struggling moments, all those moments you had to scrap pennies, amen, and, and, and eat the corner of the bread, amen, and share that last corner bag of rice and share the, th uh, the last two eggs between three people and a baby in your belly when your first coffee table was the, uh, the, the spool off of an off of a, 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 a Alabama power truck. 
Somebody said, but that was my process. And because I stayed in the process, I didn't condemn him. I didn't put him down. I didn't talk about him to my girlfriend. I didn't put, come on here, somebody. If they couldn't understand my process and say, girl, I'd be praying for you, the first one to say, I wouldn't put up with that, kick rocks. Now, there are some healthy boundaries. Because one thing, even in my process, I had to wait. I had to wait in God. I couldn't wait in the emotions of people. Because half of the ones that tell you I wouldn't put up with that, they don't put up with that plus some. Now they desperate, they putting up with anything just to say they got some. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so, 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 so God began to show me. He said, he said, tell them that, that the travail, if they had an encounter with me on last week, they travail, it still matters. I, I pulled up on the ground, and I wanted to, amen, glory to God, come in and hear everybody still travailing. I said, yeah, some of them, it was religious. Because when it's relational, it's to the point where I thought I saw myself getting here early enough. And then my husband, we were like, why are we still laughing and we so late? He said, I ain't going to even call and give out no instruction. I'm just going to see what they're going to do. In other words, every ministry, whatever sort it is, it's got to be tried by fire. If your fire is only, amen, producing when we are around so we can see what you're doing, amen, you ain't in the fire for real. What them kind of fires is, is the difference between a gas fireplace and the other kind. They got the look of a fire, but it ain't really nothing in there that can burn up nothing. Come on. Yeah, that's it. So he said, my people see what they should do, but they do not obey. I'm like, God, this spirit that them crept in and to put the fire out of men being men and women be, oh, yeah, I'm coming there too, women being women. God wasn't confused about nothing he said or nothing he made. You might have some tendencies, but that don't mean you that. Somebody say, sit in the fire. I went through it my own self, so I ain't talking at nobody. I'm talking to myself. I'm talking from my process. Glory to God. It ain't no excuse because it's yours now, but it was wrong when because it was the pastor child. Oh, the devil is a liar. If it was wrong for mine, it's wrong for yours. Same. He said, travail. Until Christ be permanently. Not temporarily. Not only when you in the church. Speaking in tongues. Irking and jerking. And I hear the Lord say, but you ain't got nothing for that pressing issue that's causing you pain and anguish in your house. You're battling for your mind. You're battling for your peace. You don't even have a travail in you to believe God that I'll go to the doctor and in spite of what they say, I know you already took a strike for this. Oh, I'm coming for you. Say what you want to say. He said, I'm, I'm done with this spirit. He said, I'm going to devour it. The real intercessors going to learn how to sit in the fire. And know my pain got purpose. If I could just sit in there for myself. I won't have to say the nurse dropped me. Or the midwife quit on me. Or the pastor didn't visit me when I was in the hospital. Or they didn't, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't call me when I was going. Come on here somebody. I know how to travail for myself. For what I'm carrying, what I'm believing to produce myself. Why? Because in spite of my pain, God promised me that my womb was still fruitful. 
That's what Hannah said. Penina, you, you, you ain't authorized to come up here. See, when I stayed down there, like the woman of God said, you could torment me when I stayed in the place where you was fruitful at. But God had a set aside place for me to produce what I desired to see in my own life. You sitting up here hating on your brothers and your sisters, your men and women of God. God said, I'm calling you to a place that I prepared for you to be fruitful in. You settling to produce in somebody else's field. I'm telling you, he, I'm full, y'all. He showed me, he said, Ruth said, I'm so, she said, I'm so fruitful now because of what's been seated in me. I don't even need to come in your field. I'll just graze the outskirt. Just give me the scrapping. I'll make some out of it. See, when you're in the posture of travailing for real and you know that God has made you fruitful, you're no longer barren, even when everybody else ain't able to produce themselves, you say, I work, I make some out of this. I take pride in the way my husband cared for me because I didn't quit on him in the struggle. I didn't make him feel like less of a man because, because we, couldn't, we couldn't go out and shop like everybody else was shopping. Only to find out they, they were only looking that way because they had a rack account. Rent a center. But everything my husband was working was eternal. It was permanent. I ain't have to worry about nobody's truck pulling up and taking none of it back. Because I learned how to wait in the fire. I'm a park. I believe my husband gonna give me some more time. Cause see, some of y'all, I lost some of y'all. But 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 the Lord is coming for the church. And prophetically, what He wanna speak is no more of what we think He's saying. It's what He's already said, and it's in the sound of your travail. And the travail and the well is gonna go against every plot, every scheme, every tactic of the enemy that will cause you to think that you can no longer produce. Watch this. This is what blessed me. He said, because of your repentance, godless our amen, we yield, then yield back to the spirit of God. And so he said in Psalms 120, 26, 5 and 6, said, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seeds. Precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. In other words, bringing his fruitfulness of what he went through with him. In other words, I'm going to show why I had to go through what I had to go through. Because some of us, if we don't, Go through this process, we're going to find ourselves back in that place again. Just as quick as we deliver, we're going to be back in that place. Come on here, somebody. So what I want to say, the naming of children can be joyful, but also a difficult task. I don't care what you went through even before this revival, conf this conference revival, something that you pushed out through you leading up to this ought to be rejoiceful. It ought to be promising. It ought to give you another hope to have an expectation of something good is about to happen in my life because I travailed, because I now know my pain has purpose. I now know that everything that caused me shame and embarrassment, everything that tried to run me away from God, now give me purpose to run to God. Everything that caused me to try to hide from God, I can expose it to God because that's the way he made me, naked and unashamed. Watch this. I'm finna finish. The real thing that I love about how God gave me this when you go to name your children that you have spiritually given birth to, it reminded me that even when Joseph was, somebody say was, in Egypt. Even 
even when he was in the place of bondage, God gave him authority to rule. You know how he ruled? That whatever that part of the process from the pit to part of a house to prison to the palace, God said, you still got ruling authority. Because you're part of the promise that I gave my people. But you don't get to the palace without going through the process of the pain that once you get there, you know you qualify to be there. So what I was, so what I was saying, God is ready to show the church why you've been going through so much pain and shame. Because this time, the gathering of that remnant that John began to speak about, he said, I also, I looked and saw a number that could not be numbered after the first initial number he saw. In other words, it's going to be a gathering of people that's going to hear the travail of the real church. Because he said, I saw your reputation. I saw your, your position you held as a lively church, but you were just religious. He said, my problem is not you continue to show up at church and do the religious thing. He said, my problem is you left your first love. Which is the truth of my word, not only to hear my word, but to listen and obey my word. He said, strengthen those that remain. Strengthen those that remain. What you mean? He said, God, if I'm going to go through this process and do what I need to do, I need you to strengthen what remains of my physical. I had to repent to God, repent to my husband, and resubmit myself to the process of this training. Some of y'all thought it was my shoes, but my legs are sore. But I'm committed to the process. Because I can go and have this procedure done. But if I don't go through the process before the, the surgery, it's best that I not have the, the surgery. And so God says, strengthen what remain? God said he looking for a people that's going to build endurance this time. You're going to have to learn how to go through the complete process. Stop whimpering, murmuring, and complaining. Lose the blame game. Sit in the fire and say, God, don't let me look at nobody else. Don't let me point fingers at nobody else. Do what you need to do in me. So when you turn me loose, when you, you cause me to birth out what you promised me, glory to God, I don't have to second guess it. I don't have to feel ashamed about it. I don't have to try to explain it. I don't have to apologize. Come on, somebody. God said in this season, he showed me, he said, in this next season, amen, you will not have a need to explain why you're blessed. you went through the process. Some of y'all looking at and saying, why Evangelist Trude ain't coming up in here crying and uh, missing church and we're still grieving. Grieving is a process. It's not just an emotion. Because if we just base it on how we feel, we'll stay in a stuck place. But when you embrace the grieving, you can produce the promise. Because the promise is, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And the promise is, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But those that remain in him, they shall be called up to meet him. So I still got a hope. 
and a future in my expected outcome. God, I don't understand it, but I trust you. It don't feel good, but it's working for my good. It was like I was hearing all kinds of reasons that people are using. And he said, but, but that's what I'm trying to tell you. You don't know my love. Because my promise said, my love covers a multitude of faults. Not just the sin and the wrongdoing of what somebody done to you, but the sin and the wrong you done to somebody else. He said, how easy do you forget what you done? And I'm seeing this cycle in this religious environment that we come, and we, so we, we bring up these problems that make us feel justified. Why well, I just can't, I, I, I forget, but I can't forget. You want to keep remembering that thing because, because here the Bible said because he had a promise. Joseph had a promise from the God of his father. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob is one of the fathers of that bad, the promise from God. He said, even though it was generational, but, the, but I have the power to deal with it. He said, I'm going to name my seed based on the promise. Not the process. So come here, Ephraim. I'm going to name you Ephraim. You're going to help me forget the pain of my past. The tar, the suffering at my father's house. All the stuff I had to do, the rejection and the being thrown in the pit, come on. The being, being, being rejected by my brothers, come on. Plotted to kill, come on here, somebody. Sold into slavery. But every place God allowed me to go through the process through, he gave me authority to rule in it. So now I know I'm in the world, but not of the world. He was in the pit, but he wasn't the pit. He went to Potter's house, but he know that wasn't his house. That's why even when Potter's wife lied on him, I respected the fact you, took, you gave me authority over it. You can touch everything in here, but don't touch your wife. I honored that. Even though I was false to come. But it took me to my next place, a process. An authority in the prison, you yet producing, because you got a promise. And the folks that did something, that deserved to be in there, they got turned loose before I and the same folks, sometimes you help in their prison, they'll get out and forget about you. Only know being connected to you was the only reason they live. But to intentionally get out and forget about me, you end up dying. I got a promise. I, I, I'm, I'm saying, God, I don't wish nothing bad on nobody, but those that that abandoned me or forgot about they, 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 they inconsistent promise to Senator and Valencia New Life House of Prayer. The time is ticking. The Lord spoke that to me this week. I'm getting ready to see the drought hit their life. Because they didn't keep their promise. What happened to us? They got, plucked in the, they got plucked in the head by the bird, killed him. Because he didn't honor his promise to the man of God. Even in your process, it might be your lowest place. But when you are part of the promise that God has planned for, people can't mishandle you. Somebody say, even in prison, he'll give you favor. Because what killed most folks? What caused most folks to lose their mind? Evangelist Donna. God keeping you in perfect peace. You don't even know why you're still here. You don't even know why you still smile something. Come on here, somebody. Come on here, somebody. Why? Because I have the favor of God. I'm part of the kingdom promise. 
And now I have an understanding. God didn't do it to punish me. He did it so he can produce through you. So what I used to be quiet about and feel ashamed and embarrassed about, now I can praise, I can travail because my pain is about to produce my promise. Amen. I didn't want what I promised you. I, didn't, I just didn't want you to make it your God. I didn't mean for you to kill it. I just want you to produce it. And now because you was willing to produce what I promised you, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. Come on here, somebody. And ain't the child outside of my will. This going to come through the loins of the promise of my will. So if God can honor you through your travail of the things you did before Christ, what happens when I posture myself now that I'm in Christ? Now that I'm in the fire, stand to your feet. Now that I know that my pain has purpose. Now that I know that I'm travailing on purpose for purpose. I'm getting ready to produce the real promise. If you read over in the scripture, it was only until she, Zion, felt the pain that it wasn't happening to kill what I'm carrying. I need this pain to produce what I was promised. When it's time for delivery, you don't have the authorization to pick and choose when you're going to travail. The Lord said he was ready in his church a few months ago. And now we're in the posture. So I said this, Jada. I said, okay, God, so what do you say? He said, now that the conference revival is over, you're going to find out. Who really has the travail? Because between last Sunday and today, it shouldn't have stopped. You should have had some things to hit your life or come at you. To make you repent some more. To make you re re reposition yourself some more. To rededicate yourself some more. To realign yourself, come on, and to be more intentional some more. Because I had to tell my, you can't play with this, Valencia. You can't let up. And no matter how good it was and all the testimonies you heard throughout the week, I heard people say, I ain't been the same. I never God, I ain't never felt God like that. I never encountered God like that. Baby, it's more than that. I ain't tricked by that. All God was saying, if, if, if what happened these last few days, you got that out of that, imagine if you continue the travail. Come on, Zion. He said, so, so it wasn't that, that she really delivered. It said before Zion travailed. That was the first part. It said before she, she, really, she really felt the pain. She had to be touched by the pain. She had to see what it was going to call to bring forth. And once she accepted what it was going to require to birth out, the Bible says she birthed out sons. Go back and read it again. It said, before Zion travail, she gave birth to a full-grown son. Then on down in it said, when Zion travail, when it actually began, became time for her to produce what her pain was causing her, she understood what it was going to take. So in the heat of it, Amber, you can't clamp down. In the heat of it, you can't quit. In the heat of it, you can't make excuses. 
Because if it didn't kill me, when it happened, guess what? It got purpose. 